so that'll yeah that'll take up most of your time but here's the thing with regards to that so you've got to also um, look at what the specialities are now for, for example uh, in Australia, one of the big things that you see very commonly is skin cancers. Yeah. Because Australia is a part of the world that doesn't have an ozone. Yeah. So the prevalence yeah, of uh, skin, you know, uh, solar related diseases, for example, it's rampant. Mm. Okay. So the ability to be able to manage that through mm. a variety of different sources, to be able to uh, manage that surgically as well. Um, is takes up a lot of time for a lot of dermatologists mm. as well. And again, it depends on where you want to be positioned. So if you're positioned in one of the major cities such as Melbourne or Sydney, well, these are large, uh, you know, metropolitan cities that have large universities that you, know, so you can subspecialize in, in a variety of so different things. What are the various subspecializations that people are doing there? Like in a lot of, uh, my, I haven't done this, uh, so I, I can't really speak too uh, authentically on it, but uh, a lot of my colleagues have gone and done the course from Cardiff on okay. uh, the dermatology course. That's an online thing and you can get a certificate. Yeah. On, uh, but it is another qualification that you can add to the mix to make yeah. your application that bit more uh, appealing yeah. uh, from that side of things. So like what are the other subspecialities? Cosmetics. Yeah, cosmetics. Okay, so cosmetics is the other thing that is huge, right? Because like I said... Botox, fillers and all of that. Yeah, so and jawline reshaping and and all the threads are becoming yeah. you know PDO threads are becoming yeah. very very popular yeah and that uh, and you know with the fillers the variety of fillers that are on the market mm. um, and being able to use that it's not just in the realm of oh I want to make my cheeks bigger or I want to make <laughs> my lips bigger right okay it's about uh, actually you know improving collagen you know uh, really improving that that yeah. deep layer and then combining. Um, modalities with Botox, with fillers, with threads yeah. to, to be able to achieve that non-surgical result. Yeah. And then there are, And if you want to specialize in pediatrics, then pediatrics obviously, yes, also then, yeah. then yeah. Uh, therapy also. Yeah, I, I, my, my opinion on this is that you should get a solid base. Okay, yeah. All right? Because I think if you, the risk is that if you specialize too early, then do you miss out a lot? Of, and you know, the thing is, the having that experience, having that broad base of experience, then gives you more of an opportunity to make an, uh, uh, an informed decision mm -hmm. of what speciality you want to, to progress. Yes, you may end up, but I think that needs a solid basis, clinical, yeah. uh, clinical uh, uh, yeah. basis in a variety of other different. Um, so this I, I realize like of, of living in India because the breadth of experience that you'll get in a short period of time. It's amazing. And you'll never get that anywhere in the world. Yeah. Trust oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like that was also the, the thing. And then, but I also, <laughs> and again, uh, from my personal experience, what I found is that as time went on, what is important to you also changes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And you've got to be open to accepting those changes mm -hmm. and then deciding what what works for you, mm -hmm. right? So you may look at my job right now, which is hair transplant surgery, yeah, and go, like, oh, wow. Well, no, on the contrary. Okay, I'll give you an example, okay? When I first uh, was introduced to hair transplant surgery, um, I didn't know anything about it. Okay. Okay? I, had no, I felt like that too. Well, yeah, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know even conceptually what it, what it, how it worked or what it meant. And uh, I had a colleague that told me, um, have you ever thought about a career in hair transplant? Wow. Right. And I, I said, uh, no. And he said, well, but I think you'd be, you have the personality for it. You'd be really good, good at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. He said, well, there's, there's this guy that's coming and, you know, maybe you can observe him and, uh, you know, see if it's of benefit to you. And this is a true story. I didn't do anything about it, okay? And I met up with my friend uh, mm -hmm. later, uh, six months later. He said, hey, did you, uh, what happened? Did you go see uh, this guy about uh, learning hair transplant? And I said, no. And because life got in the way and I mm -hmm. was just doing my routine, my OPD, all these things. Um, and I felt bad because someone was giving me career advice and I didn't take it. So I begrudgingly said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this just to at least say that I've done it. 
And I went and contacted this person and then watched him do his hair transplant surgery. And I kid you not, it was the most boring thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> Right. And at the end, and I was there for a day. This is I, going to be very inspiring for a lot of us. It was literally the dictionary definition of watching paint dry. I <sighs> left that first day going, I cannot imagine why I would, I would do this, right? And so what happened was at the end of that day, this, uh, this guy who's now become uh, my mentor, my very good friend, uh, has literally taught me everything in the in the field. Um, what happened was that he, at the end of the day, he sort of asked me, "Well, you know, what do you think? Are you, you know, are you interested?" And I didn't have the heart to say, "This is not for me." So I said, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe yes, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And so he said, "Do you want to come back tomorrow?" And I said, "Okay." Oh, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. So I went back the next day. And the next day, I kind of was like, oh, maybe there's, potentially there's something there. And I stuck with it, all right? Um, but it took me a good two or three months of sort of doing it and going, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> and then you kind of, and then something for me suddenly clicked. Okay. Right? And it, I, uh, and now, I do nothing else and I can't see myself doing anything else. And it, it really has become my passion for a number of different reasons. I love the, the diagnostic process. I love the fact that we make a massive difference in people's yeah. lives. Um, I'm very blessed because I have a great team that, that uh, works with me. So you, you feel that you're all together in, you know, unlike my previous, my, uh, my practice before, which is that you're, you feel like you're one person show, right? Someone mm -hmm. comes and sees you, yeah. you manage that and, and off they go. This is together as a team, yeah. we're now going to uh, do Make this. A difference. Correct. And so uh, that for me is the most, most, you know, the fact that we make a difference in people's lives and uh, that they are so grateful, so appreciative. Um, I, I love what I do. Yeah. And so, sorry, this is a more rambled way to, to say that, you know, everyone, you got to be open to it and find your passion. Yes. Sometimes it's fit. Okay. Uh, I had one more question. Like sure. since you've been across the globe, sort of. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I really Googled hard, like what are the exams people can take after derma? Yes. That require only the knowledge of derma. So the only exam that I could come up with was SCE. Mm -hmm which the U, uh, Royal College holds. Yes. So what is your take on that exam? Is it useful? Like besides a tag, what is it? I think, I, I, I don't have that and I know people that, that do. Um, again, I think you're right. I think your, your assessment of it is, is, it is that it is a tag. Okay. And, and maybe it's just me or the point of uh, where I am in my life is that chasing those tags it's not useful it's not useful yeah. in the sense that it may give you fulfillment in the Temporary, short term yeah. right but is it going to change it's value change your life mm -hmm. and change what you're going to do I think mm -hmm. I would sort of view it from a different lens now in mm -hmm. with the benefit of I, I think that that's the fundamental thing because if the if the exam is your goal is if it's like if that's your hurdle what's next yeah you accomplish that what's next yeah because then the the this obsession concept. with gratification is never ending yes. so it's about finding other things to provide gratification yeah. other things that are going to provide fulfillment uh, one last one like i'll keep this one in the end okay so this one is for the residents and for uh, the new mba student who might be starting out like what is your one word of advice uh, one for the residents and one for the undergraduates. Okay, just give us a, 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 ask the question again because someone was reading uh, there. Okay, yeah. uh, like a word of advice for the undergraduates and the postgraduates who are new to the field. Yeah. So I think for the undergraduates is um, keep an open mind. Okay, I think what you think that you want as soon as you graduate is usually not what you end up doing. Yeah. And I mean that, I say, I say that from experience. I look at my batchmates uh, from, you know, from my MBBS uh, days and everything that we probably said that we were going to do career-wise at, you know, in our third or fourth year, I'm pretty sure 90% of us are not doing it. Yes, it's We can make this.